What's up everyone, this is Max Red. Today we're going to try and clarify the differences between using rack instruments versus instrument tracks in Cubase Pro. For years, this has been a debate amongst Cubase users and with the evolution of Cubase over time, the difference has become insignificant. So let's dive in and figure out what type of track is best used in your music production. We'll begin by using a rack instrument and highlighting its features, ease of use, and CPU consumption. We open up an instance of Halion 6 and select a piano instrument. Once we create the track, we can select the preset sound from the Raven collection. We'll go with repeating dreams for this example. Let's listen to what that sounds like. On our track, I have preloaded a MIDI pattern, which we'll use throughout this video. Notice the level of our system usage with just the one track. We then open up another instrument using the same VST Halion 6. For this one, we'll go with a whirly and dark pad sound. We then route the output to output number 2 and create the MIDI track for the pad. After we name and color the track, we copy our MIDI event and drag it into our MIDI track. Notice that our usage went up after we added the second layer. Using a rack instrument allows us to render in place any of the MIDI tracks we created. We can name the track and now we can check if only the keys were rendered and not the entire VST output. We can name this track, so now we can keep up with any new rendered audio. Another feature to notice is the ability to have separate mixer channels for all of your MIDI tracks. We can rename this output to keys and verify that the pad isn't using the same output. Let's solo the whirly and check. With separate channels, we can insert plugins and add sense to our tracks. Having separate channels allows us control on the VST and on our mix console. Another great feature of using the rack instrument with MIDI tracks is the ability to export or bounce out the individual tracks. 
we'll bounce out our two MIDI tracks and double check that the output is correct and not a combined audio track from the Halion 6 VST. Let's listen and confirm that the keys are soloed out and do not include the whirly pad. Now we check the whirly pad. Now we create an instrument track and recreate our example to see if there are any differences between using the rack and the instrument track. Here we have loaded the same Halion 6 piano and the same MIDI pattern we used in the earlier example. With instrument tracks and multi-timbral instruments like Halion 6, we are also able to create MIDI tracks and route additional instruments to the new track. We can then add the same whirly pad to the second track like we did in the earlier example. Once we select our instrument, we make sure the output is also set to number 2. We then copy our MIDI event and drag it into our newly created MIDI track. Let's listen for the whirly pad now. Notice that the usage is similar to using the rack instrument. We're still also able to render out any individual tracks. So far we have separate channel controls and can still render out the tracks just like when we were using the rack instruments. Lastly, we can see if we are able to bounce out the individual audio from the MIDI tracks powered by Halion 6. We select the two instrument tracks and rename them as to not override the previous tracks that we bounced out. After we export the audio, we can check that only the individual track was bounced out. So in my experience, using either instrument tracks or rack instruments has been nearly identical. I think when you start using a high number of instruments, the instrument track is the way to go. If you are using only one VST instance, it really doesn't matter. That's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't and hit a like if you did. Thank you.